The first chapter of the Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. Repent and believe in the gospel. The phrase, the time is fulfilled, is translated in the original Greek text from the words plerao hokaros, whereas keros represents a time element called a season, and plerao means to be full, to be complete, to be fulfilled. In other words, the season that you are in right now is coming to an end because it's complete, it's filled up. Everything that could be accomplished in this season has already been accomplished. And now we are transitioning into a new season, into a new time. We're moving out of what Jesus called the times of the Gentiles. And we are stepping into the season of the end times. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. The Greek in Gizzo means it's imminent. It means it's fast approaching. It's upon us now. It's time for the kingdom of God to be established in the earth. The Moed moment of Jesus' return has been set from the foundation of the world. And that time is upon us right now. Different translation says it this way. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. The time promised by God has come at last. Time is coming to an end. The kingdom of God has arrived. And the Amplified says it this way. The appointed period of time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent. Seek God's purpose for your life and believe in the good news. <laughs> In the last 2,000 years, I wonder how many millions of times this simple prayer has been offered up to God. Our Father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, that prayer is finally being completely answered on the earth, and you and I have a front row seat as it begins to come to pass. Not only as spectators, but also as participants. And Jesus said, if you want to fully participate as an overcomer, you have to do two things. You have to, number one, repent, and number two, you have to believe in the gospel. Now, the word repent in the Greek is the Greek word metanoeo, and it doesn't mean to feel guilty or to beat yourself up for bad living. It literally means to think differently, to change the way you're thinking and change the way you're perceiving things that are happening in your life and in the world. So you can change your mind and get your mind right with God so you can fully release your faith and believe in the gospel. You have to stop thinking with last season's mentality, mentality with last season's wineskin and begin to put on a new wineskin skin for the new season that we're walking into now. And the new wineskin will equip you and prepare you so you can fully embrace the new things that God is doing on the earth today. It's time to move on out of yesterday's normal. We'll never go back to that. And to embrace the end time that's been prophesied from the foundation of the world. The prophet Daniel understood this. When he was taken captive as a young man and brought into Babylon, when he was learning how to interpret and discover the prophetic voice of God, when his world was totally turned upside down, he learned something and he wrote it in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, again in several translations. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For he alone has all wisdom and all power. He knows all. He does all. He controls the course of world events. And he changes the seasons and he guides history. He raises up kings and he brings them down. He provides both intelligence and discernment. 
He opens the depths. He reveals secrets and light spills out of him. <laughs> Voice translation says it this way. He gives wisdom to the wise and grants knowledge to those with understanding. He gives wisdom and knowledge to those that possess understanding. If you want the eyes of your understanding flooded with God's light, if you want to tap into God's wisdom, you have to change the way you've been thinking and stop, stop limiting God in your thought life. We have to stop dumbing God down to our reality and our way of thinking and instead ask God to lift us up into his realm to begin to think the thoughts of God, to begin to see what it is that he wants us to do and what he wants us to be because he grants knowledge to those that have understanding. The word in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word, Aramaic and Hebrew word, binah. And it means not only understanding, but discernment. Understanding with wisdom and perception and discernment. The theological workbook of the Old Testament says the root refers to knowledge that is superior to the mere ga gathering of data. In other words, this isn't an understanding that you can get from the news media. This isn't an understanding that you can learn from our world leaders. Because the news media and the world leaders aren't necessarily trying to plug in to the wisdom of God. Ben is the power of judgment and perceptive insight, and it's demonstrated in how you apply and use this knowledge. Are you open to hearing God's voice? Are you really open to let him talk to you? Are you available to hear and see angels as they come to announce God's plan for your life? Are you ready and receptive for prophetic night visions and dreams that shows and reveals God's destiny and God's plan in the earth? Are you open to hearing God's voice? The same word, Benah, is used in 1 Chronicles 12, where it talks about the children, the tribe of Issachar. They were men of the Torah. They studied the word. And it says they were men that had a bina, an understanding of the times of the seasons to know what Israel ought to do. They understood God's time, but they also understood God's plan, what God's people ought to be doing in this time. And they made themselves available to God and to the Holy Spirit. You have to change the way you are thinking and perceiving things and begin to ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding and cause you to see and understand the hope, the prophetic destiny of his calling in your life. When the prophet Jeremiah was shackled to a post in a prison courtyard because he was prophesying about God's judgment, and most of the leaders of that time didn't want to hear him prophesy, he was a thorn in their side because he was giving them the word of God. So he was beaten and chained to this post in the middle of the courtyard, laughed and jeered at. When the Lord Jehovah spoke to him and offered an amazing invitation to him, <laughs> and at probably one of the lowest points of his life, God opens up the heavens and says this, Jeremiah, if you'll call unto me and if you'll ask me, I'll answer you. <laughs> The Hebrew, Anna, I'll put my eye on you and I'll respond to you. I'll sing to you and I'll testify to you while you're chained to this post in this courtyard in prison. And I will show you great and mighty things. The Hebrew, Nagad, I will manifest things to you you've never seen before. I will declare and explain things to you that you don't know. I'll make known and expose you to things you had no idea even existed. Great and mighty things which you know not, yada, which you don't perceive now. You're not aware of now. You're not acquainted with it in the past because it wasn't time for it to be revealed. You have no knowledge of it, but now I'm ready to reveal it to you, just like he's ready to reveal some things to you that you were not ready to receive just three years ago or 10 years ago. These are mighty things. The Hebrew batsar means things that are isolated, 
that are inaccessible, cut off, secrets and mysteries. In other words, he says, I am going to begin to reveal things to you that otherwise would be totally inaccessible to your understanding. If you will change the way you're thinking and open up your mind to God and to angels and to the Holy Spirit and to visions and to dreams, I'll cause you to see into my realm, God is saying. I'll cause you to see what you need to see and what you need to know to walk in these last days. The basic English translation says, Jeremiah, let your cry come to me. And let this be your cry as well. Raise your voice to God and said, I will give you an answer and I will let you see secret things of which you had no knowledge. Knox translation says, I'll reveal to you great mysteries that lie beyond your keen, your mental perception. I will make them known to you. The message translation says, and I will tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never have figured out on your own. <laughs> we are standing in the best time to be alive that man has ever walked in. But you have to change the way you're thinking. You have to put off yesterday's wineskin and put on the new wineskin. Because yesterday's wineskin was not designed to handle the level of glory and revelation that you're about to walk into. So we've got to put on new clothes, clothes for the end time. Second Timothy 1 9 tells us God saved us and he called us with a holy calling. You've been saved and you've been called, but his calling is not according to your works. The Hebrew kata, it's not based on or commensurate with my works and my deeds because my deeds fall short. But it's according to his own purpose, his own plan, his destiny for your life that's in Christ Jesus, according to the grace that was given us in Christ Jesus, look at this, before the world began. My, my. The Greek pro chronos aeonios, literally before the era of time, before time began, God saved you, he called you, and he graced you in Christ Jesus. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was face to face with God, and all things that were made were made by this word. This word is Jesus. And the word became flesh and tabernacled in our midst. John said, we've handled him. We've talked to him. We've heard him speak. That word that they, they saw walk on the earth and they lived with for three and a half years is the same word was th that was there in Genesis 1, before Genesis 1, 1. And in Jesus, God designed the plan of salvation. And as he was designing that plan of salvation, he was calling you. Your name was on him, on his lips and in his heart. Your destiny and your plan for you, his plan for you in these days was in his mouth and placed in Jesus Christ from the foundation of the world. Philip's translation says it like this, before time began, he planned, he had a plan and he planned to give us in Christ the grace to achieve this purpose his purpose for our life in these last days. Did you hear what I just said? From the foundation of the world, not only did God save you, not only did he call you, not only did he prescribe a destiny for you in these days, but he also made available the grace <laughs> to fulfill that destiny, to completely fulfill your season of destiny. Before Adam even sinned in the garden, before Lucifer rebelled against God and his righteousness, God saved you. He called you in Christ Jesus. He graced you with everything you need to fulfill your prophetic destiny on earth. That's why you need to get your mind right with God. That's why you got to stop yesterday thinking. And let him begin to lift you into his realm and to see what he sees and to hear what he hears. And the fact that you were born on planet Earth at this time, at this place, 
while the earth is being transitioned from the times of the Gentiles into the end of time. At the fact that you're born at this season, it's because God chose you to be alive at this moment. And God chose you to be a part of the ecclesia in these last days. Jesus said it, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's looking, his eyes are running to and fro through the earth, looking for those that he called, looking for those that he saved and graced. Are they going to stand up and declare the gates of hell are not going to prevail against this member of the ecclesia? I am going to stand up and I'm going to do what God says I can do. And I'm going to say what he says I can do, say, and I'm going to go where he tells me to go. And I'm going to plant what he tells me to plant. And I'm going to grow what he tells me to grow because I've been born again for such a time as this. God chose you in eternity's past so you could live in this present moment of the last days, right before Jesus' second coming, because he has a plan for you. And he wants you, he's inviting you to participate, to not just be a spectator, but to actually participate in these end time events. The kingdom of God is at hand, and it's your hands that God is going to be using it's your voice and it's your life that he has purposed before the eons of time to be present right now, to bring revival. You're the instrument of revival and releasing of God's will in your circle of influence on planet earth. And he gave you in Christ Jesus the grace to completely fulfill his destiny for your life. The word grace is translated from the Greek root haris. According to Strong's Concordance, and I, lo I love this definition, Haris is the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in life. Did you get that? Grace is the divine influence of God's spirit and God's joy and God's presence and God's energy and God's provision onto your heart, into your heart, and then it reflects into the life, into the world around you. God's grace is coming on you and it's flowing in you and through you and out of you. And it's enabling you to do what you could never accomplish, accomplish on your own. To do all of God's plan in love, in peace, and filled with the joy of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. While the world is going crazy, you and I are keeping our minds straight. We're focused on God. While the world is falling apart with violence, with the Hamas spirit, and people are, are, are being offended and are betraying one another, we are walking in love. We are walking in peace. We are walking in joy because we are walking in the divine flow of God's grace. <laughs> the voice translation says it this way, because eons and eons of time ago, before time existed, God gave you his grace in Jesus, the anointed one, your liberating king. Did you hear that? Will you allow Jesus to be a liberating king? Will you change what you have been thinking and give him permission to liberate your mind from the strongholds and the imaginations that have held you back all these years? Will you get your mind right with God and dare to believe things that you never thought were possible before? And dare to speak the words that he gives you to speak and to do what he tells you to do. Romans 12, a verse that I quote many times in the Phillips translation says, Do not let the world squeeze you into its own mold. Don't let the world tell you what you can or cannot do. What you can or cannot have. Don't listen to what the news is saying and what the prognosticators are saying and declaring and how we're, our life is going to be diminished. I'm here to tell you, while the world is being diminished, the glory of God is coming on, the ecclesia, and we are increasing. We aren't getting less. We're getting stronger. We aren't going through lack and poverty. We're getting more abundant and walking in the riches of the glory of Christ Jesus because his grace is upon us to enable us to fulfill everything that he wants us to do. And how do, we, how do we break free from the world forming us and squeezing us into its mold? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by changing the way you're thinking. 
The Greek word metamorphuo means be transfigured. It means be glorified. It means receive the glory of God and be available and open for God's glory flowing in you and on you and through you and out of you into the world around you. And that happens by you changing the way you're thinking. I'm no longer going to dumb, dumb the Bible down to my reality, dumb God down to my reality, dumb angels down to my reality. What I say can and cannot be is possible. Or not. I am now going to say, God, lift me up into your reality and cause me to see what you see. Let me be transfigured. Let me be glorified today, tonight, tomorrow, and next year until the second coming of the Lord. Teach me how to walk in your glory. Teach me how to, how to be an instrument of your glory and how to shepherd the glory of God. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Say it out loud. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. The Lord supplies all my need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through the Lord Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Everything I set my hand to is prospering and being abundant and overflowing. Jesus came so I can walk and live in the abundant life and the gates of hell will not prevail against me because I am crying out and I am asking for God to open my eyes and he is opening my eyes and he's opening your eyes and he's opening your ears. He is flooding you with the light of his prophetic destiny, the words that he created just for you from the foundation of the world. Reach out and take it and grab it. It's yours.